Hello, Wanderers. Welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series following Teon Dane, the Sword of the Morning, the Rider of the Dragon, Grey Ghost. And in that last episode, when Daemon Targaryen failed to conquer the Stormlands in a bid to gain a foothold in the Seven Kingdoms, well, a little bit of time has passed since then, about two years. And during those two years, Starfall has been invaded indeed it has been invaded by giants and i don't mean the giants from up here in the north no i mean giants in our court because we got a couple more channel member characters i know there's a lot this series kind of blew up and we got a lot of channel member characters and you know there's there's a lot but it, the interesting thing about this is that they all get a chance to make a name for themselves uh, just through the random events of this series so let's take a look we already got one giant, and that's Magnus the Slaughterer, uh, this crazy Skagosi man. Uh, he's going to get himself executed at some point because he's just a brutal, just it, <laughs> just the craziest guy. How he ended up here, how we haven't, uh, you know, ended up uh, beheading him yet. He must have the luck of the gods because uh, he has somehow survived uh, in the court of an honorable man like Tion Dane. But we do have some new characters as well such as Garland Rowan here. Now, Sir Garland, the towering tree of House Rowan, he's the second son of House Rowan from here in the Reach. And, uh, well, that's a that's a pretty ancient family. And um, as the second son, he has a little bit more freedom, a little bit more leeway, and he has come to see the man who could tame a dragon who was not a Targaryen. And so he came and made his way down here. Um, and we were so impressed by this young man that we actually uh, ended up knighting him ourselves uh, just through his sheer uh, skillet arms and, and things like that. And, and you know, he's got a, an honest temperament to him. He is a just man. So but also he's huge. He's very he's a very tall, very tall man. And he's not the last very tall man. Uh, we've also got Agir Urzak here, who is a Astapori former slave. So. He uh, was somebody who was here, um, taken as a slave from Astapor. Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Astapor is right here, or it's over here. I can't, I can never remember uh, which, where all the cities uh, around this region are. But anyways, it's somewhere, somewhere vaguely over here. And, uh, well, I mean, look at them. He's a huge, just brute of a man and he obviously made a name for himself fighting and uh, somehow got himself free during the war with Damon and ended up coming back with us in our armies and now serves as one of the knights in our armies we've also got Azael Hammer here another giant like I said we got invaded by these guys uh, Azael is a interesting character he's a bastard born um, but he's half stone Dornish half a Stormlander. So his mother was, I believe, a Stone Dornish handmaiden. And, uh, well, he uh, it was a smith for a time somewhere, kind of maybe over here near Blackhaven. Can't quite recall. But in any case, he has ended up in our court as well. We'll end up getting him a wife at some time here. But, uh, you know, I don't think he, he's got, he's, old, he's a young man. He's got a little bit of time for that. We've also got Rodney Caring. Now, Rodney, or Rodnar, I should say, uh, Rodnar Quarterfoot Caring. Uh, this is a man who in many ways mirrors a Larry's Strong, but is on kind of the other end of the spectrum, whereas Larry's Strong is, well, at least according to the House of the Dragon show, not only a creep, but a horrible, horrible man. Uh, Rod Rodnar is certainly somebody who also has had to rely on skills other than combat, other than strength of arms. And has taken the path of intrigue and subterfuge. Um, but he, rather than being, you know, a cutthroat type of man, uh, he is just and he is loyal as well. So this makes him a pretty interesting spy master here. Um, and we have given him that position. Um, and then we've also got Bale Shield Blood. Now, this is a man, a fang man, a wildling who has, you know, fled the fled the north of the wall and apparently he has made his way all the way south some uh, uh you know i don't know if it was something that somebody in his family told him but they were said to go all the way south i mean you can see 
he's got the green side here. So something has told him to make his way all the way south. And he has managed to do so. And he's gotten so far south, he's made his way to Starfall. So some pretty interesting characters here. Now, I did kind of, I was joking about the invasion of giants, but I, we are actually being invaded. And as you can see, that is by the reach. Now, I was letting some time pass because I wanted some interesting stuff to happen in the wake of a Damon's failure to capture the uh, three daughters or to capture Stormlands anyways. Um, also, if you have some suggestions for what we could rename the three daughters here, I am more than willing to hear them out. I've had some people suggest like New Valyria or the Freehold or, or things like that. But if you've got some good suggestions, let me know because uh, we will potentially look into those. But yes, the the reach itself has decided to attack Dorne, and not only attack Dorne, but specifically uh, lands belonging to House Dane. So we are going to be getting into a fight here, and I am pretty happy about that, honestly, because this means we get to use our dragon. We've been waiting to really get to use our dragon. We didn't really get any opportunities here in the Stormlands because of how you know overwhelming the forces of the Iron Throne were. Um, but this time I'm hoping that we're going to get some good chances to do use things with our dragon. So, um, we're going to, uh, yeah, we're going to defend our lands as well. So that probably means that we should raise up our armies because we're going to need to use, utilize our armies to assist, um, the Dornish forces here. So let's see where, where's the Dornish armies? Oh, they're already moving here, right? This must be the, yeah, there we go. All right, so we're going to have to move in with the Dornish armies because I want to get my dragon in here. I'm hoping that we will be considered kind of like a co, like I'm hoping that the Reach's armies are going to be hostile to us. I'm not sure if they will or if we need to, um, can we offer to join the war? We can, there we go. Yeah, okay, so that's what we got to do. There we go. This means that we can actually go in and assist with our dragon in these battles. So that's going to be hopefully pretty awesome. <laughs> Anyways, so we've got a lot of forces here. The cool thing is, you know, that they actually do have to go in and make their way through these mountain passes here, through the Prince's Pass uh, into Dorne. So, oh, and there's their army right there. Yeah, look at that. And they're going to feel confident too because of the fact that um, they've got these such large forces here. But look at this, here we go. We're gonna get our dragon in. We are leading the army, so this should uh, pull us in here and give us that advantage that we need, hopefully. Yeah, look at this. Oh, Arthur, oh, oh no, Frederick Stormblood was slain in battle. <laughs> this is one of our counselor tier member characters didn't have didn't get to have any children either Ugh, that's unfortunate frederick stormblood you did fight well he was slain by lord aimer the bard of darkdal that's one of the things when you're playing counselor member characters if you get your characters into this game which you can just by signing up on youtube or patreon i i don't control what happens to them if they die they they die and unfortunately frederick stormblood did die. You can make it less likely that your character will die by, you know, not choosing things like brave and making them a warrior. But, ah, you know, everybody wants to be a warrior. What's in what's glory without uh, a little risk here? So, uh, OK, interesting. Some bugs there. Magnus is ripping some heads off. Great. Good for you, Magnus, I guess. Um, and we're we're just going in here. It's a slaughter. It truly is a slaughter. Um. Let's see, why choose one path when you can choose all of them? What is this? Hobber brought my son, grandson, Tion, to the market. Um, he gains the trait fickle. No, you must care. We can't. We can't really afford this stress, so that's just fine. We'll let our maester manage the situation there. All right, there we go. All right, we're going to try to engage this small army here. I'm hoping that we get a dragon event. Can we, do we have to use something? A decision or anything like that? No, I think it is random. But we did get rid of a mod that was interfering with the dragon events. But in any case, I mean, 
a couple of slaughters there. So let's take a look at the first one here. Pretty big battle. We got the significant uh, uh, advantage there. And I'm guessing our dragon, look at this. Wow. Three. <laughs> oh, prowess is 100 because, wait, why is our prowess 100? Oh, riding dragon in battle. Damn, I see, I see. So yeah, when you got your dragon in there. So we got 373 kills ourselves with our dragon. Great ghost is just burning guys up in the battle. I wonder if um Oh, I totally forgot to mention. I will I will address I will address this situation in just a moment, but I did want to take a look at uh at our dragon here. Great ghost, do you get any did you get any kills? Oh yeah, look at this. Finger finger veilman was stomped to death. I mean, I'm assuming that was uh during one of these battles. But oh, and look at this. Who who is it? Who is the got the most kills on the side of the reach? It is none other than the man who was sent to hunt us down, Lord Athos the Black Huntsman of House Starley. Look at this badass. He's got a freaking ruby in his eye and you know for his for his one-eyed trait like this guy's a badass and he's coming after us he tried but uh hard to get a dragon in there then of course we've got lord lyman the black tower here um you know just once again getting a lot of kills of magnus of course arthur making a name for himself Egir, robert rhinus uh azael uh lord tristane lord tristane fowler nice well done Alan, of course, Garland getting some kills, Damon. Yeah, look at this, Martin, even Martin. We did we did uh, pay for Martin's uh, freedom here. So even Martin getting some kills there as well. And then you can take a look at all the rest of them. And then poor Frederick slain. Let's take a look at the events of the battle. Mag <laughs> oh God, Magnus ripping guys and chopping them into pieces. He chopped up a Lord, Lord of House Uffering here. And <laughs> for Lee Sugdale. Then we've got Azale Hammer. Yeah, just uh, those berserkers. They're just insane. Oh, and then our knight Garland Rowan was maimed. Oh, one-legged. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, that's what happens. I, like I said, you know, these characters, they get into the battles. And uh, you know what? Bad things can happen. So uh, sorry, Sir Garland. Um, but you're going to have to learn how to hold your weight up your considerable weight on, uh, on one leg there. Oof. That is rough. Um, but yeah, crazy battles. That's what happens in battles, man. You know, nobody is safe now, especially not in game of Thrones. You guys know how this, you guys know how these stories go. Wonder where the Reachmen armies are going now. Are they trying to circumvent us? Kind of looks like they are. Ooh. Okay. So you can play at that game. I don't think we can beat their armies on our own. But if our if the Dornish forces do come in, we might be able to take them here in the pass. We got to earn some glory for ourselves. Let's just make sure our allies are going to join us and then we'll engage the fight here. There we go. Nice. So we are leading this battle. Hopefully, come on, dragon events. Also, I am uh, I am greatly sorry for all the counselor member characters that are going to die in these battles. It's going to happen. I'm sorry, but uh, there's nothing nothing we can do there. Look at us crushing the force. They, they got nothing. They got nothing left. We evaporated that army pretty much here. Yeah. Oh, man. Do they have anything left? They don't. They, got, they just got utterly... They could not defeat... I mean, you got to admit. Like, let's take a look at... Okay, we'll take a look at this minor battle here. This was the, the smaller battle that we fought uh, just down here. Nothing too interesting there, but a nice victory for Teon himself. But then the Battle of Prince March here. Oh, is this the right one? No. This was... Oh, okay. This must have been some troops that came in after here. Was this the, the big one there? Kind of looks like it. Yeah, we got some more kills there. Events. Yeah, look at this. We captured Gunther. We captured Lord Titus of Stillwood. And then, ooh, Damon Dalt. Damn, Damon. Damon Dalt doing a good job slaying a guy. And then Athen. Don't really know who this is, but 
needs to lose somebody as well. So look at that. Damon Dalt making a name for himself as well. Damon, the uh, cool looking character as well. So there we go. Damn, battle has been won. Haha, <laughs> look at that. Well done. This is exactly this is exactly what Teon tamed Grey Ghost for was to protect Dorne from outside forces, from outside invasion. And we just did it. Like, you know, maybe Dorne could have pulled off a victory here without Teon, but I it would have been a lot harder. They had a they had a good troop advantage by like 10,000 troops. And Teon did a lot to mitigate that advantage. You could probably say he was the the significant turning point in that war. And so, damn, yeah, we got to do what we have been meaning to do for, for a long time. Now, in the wake of our victory over the, uh, the forces of House Tyrell here, we do need to address, yes, indeed, the sad death of our eldest son and heir, Lord Edric the Rothstar, who died when attempting to tame a dragon. I'm not sure which dragon he was attempting to tame. I'm guessing it was, well, it had to be one of the wild ones. So it was either, let's see, which wild ones do we have? Melee's or Sea Smoke. So it could have been Sea Smoke. <laughs> oh God, look how many people Sea Smoke has killed. Wow, that's insane. So it wasn't Sea Smoke. Um, was it Melee's then? Uh, let's see. Mm, no, it doesn't look like it was Melee's. I wonder if it will even show. It could have been one of the other uh, wild dragons as well. Cannibal or something like that. What about Cannibal? Did you kill our son, Cannibal? No, he's he just he just kills other dragons. He just eat. How many dragons has he eaten? My God, <laughs> like Cannibal, you are a monster, <laughs> like a true true monster. Um, yeah. So Dreamfire couldn't be Dreamfire. Can't be Vermithor Sheep Stealer. No, it's sheep, sheep stealers in the dragon pit. Wow, they actually got sheep stealer into the dragon pit. Very impressive. So I don't know what dragon it was, but uh, our son tried to tame a dragon and he failed. Horrific, severely burned, brutally mauled, was eaten by a dragon. Burned, mauled, eaten. I mean, he was a you know an ambitious and brave young man. He might not have been a good man. Uh, you know, wrathful. He had a temper, but he was honest. So I don't think he was a bad man. But you know, yeah, he certainly he certainly had ambitions. We're pretty sure he was embezzling from us. So, yeah. But uh, obviously, with his father being so prestigious and you know having tamed a dragon, Edric thought that he could do the same. But whatever it is that Lord Tion has that allowed him to tame the dragon. Whatever force of character is within Teon, the Sword of the Morning, doesn't seem to have been within his son, Lord Edric, uh, which means that our young heir now is a Lord Aaron Brightstar here, whom we have knighted already by the age of 14, because he is actually, as you can see, quite skilled. Uh, you know, he's going to be a, a dashing young man. Uh, he'll probably be a hit with the ladies, though I don't imagine that that will a matter <laughs> too much to him. Um, but yeah, will will Aaron here be able to take up the mantle of the Rider of Greystar? I mean, he has been our uh, ward for a very long time, so he's obviously more familiar with Grey, uh, sorry, Grey Ghost. And, you know, he's probably ridden uh, on the back of Grey Ghost with us. I'm hoping that Lord Aaron is going to be able to pull off... Uh, Taming Grey Ghost, but we'll see. It's gonna be it's gonna be difficult for him. What do we have here? I would like for your son, grandson, Mary and Dane, to become the squire of Quinlan Korgal. Yeah, all right. I'm, I'm down with that. We got we got good relations with House Korgal here. I mean, our daughter's pregnant with his son, and she's already had three children for him. So there we go. Yeah, not too bad. I don't want to be your admiral, <laughs> Corin. Get out of here. Uh, I did see that Corin is now engaged to 
um, Jerome Fascios, the, uh, I believe, daughter of the Prince of Pentos. So Dor- uh, Corin here getting an alliance. Um, I can't afford this. Doran uh, here is getting an alliance with Pentos. So we've got kind of three factions here. We've got the Iron Throne, obviously the dominating force kind of over everything. But we'll see what happens. You know, Prince Aegon's getting older here. He's got his dragon. His dragon's kind of crazy, (laughs) bloodthirsty, aggressive. Yeah, so if Aegon's anything like his dragon, um, who knows uh, what's going to happen in in the future there. But for now, Rhaenyra has managed to do a pretty good job of holding things solid. Then we've got the other faction, which of course is King Daemon here. You'll notice that King Daemon has a new coat of arms. We've got kind of two Targaryen branches. Now, I didn't want to do a full-on cadet branch for Daemon. I don't think that, you know, Daemon, like, Daemon isn't going to be somebody who's going to say, like, ah, I'm not a Targaryen anymore. I'm a a dark fire or something like that, right? Like Damon believes he's the heir to House Targaryen. So he's going to keep that. But he has added the sword Dark Sister to his coat of arms. I think it, I don't know, I think this looks pretty cool actually. So it's basically the same Targaryen coat of arms, except it's got the sword uh, representing Dark Sister here. So now we've got these two branches of, um, of House Targaryen. And we'll kind of be able to see at a glance, you know, which ones are from Damon's branch here and which ones are from the main branch in the Seven Kingdoms. So, yeah, that's uh, I think that's going to be pretty, pretty interesting right there. And then, of course, like the third, the other faction. So, you know, most powerful faction, probably second most powerful faction is Damon's. I, I would say definitely it's Damon's because he's got um, the dragons. And uh, and then Dorne would probably be next. 25,000 uh, 25, troops. So, like, uh, actually a pretty reasonable amount here uh, of troops that uh, we've got that we can uh, muster up here in Dorne. And then you've got Pentos, which is kind of, you know, a last kind of, like, late coming up fourth here. You know, you can't really count these little bits in Andalus unless somebody somehow unifies them. And the wildlings are just... You know, well, they're pretty it's it's wild up there in the north right now. So, you know, you've kind of got these four factions um, and it's going to be interesting to see how they play. I'm really curious to see what Damon's going to do in the future and like how his family's going to spread, because we're going to have these two Targaryen branches and like presumably they're going to get, you know, like some dragons like they're probably got. I think they already have some dragon eggs um I, I i think they've got some dragon eggs anyways so you know damon's probably gonna have like a couple dragon riders in his family there's potentially gonna be you know a future dance of dragons um here when Aegon comes of age hard to say i mean you know he he seems like the type ambitious deceitful arrogant paranoid yeah i wouldn't be surprised if uh this kid gets uh decides to start his own and look at his face he looks like a troublemaker he's also <laughs> helena in this uh in this version look at her revengeful crate well actually you know craven uh eccentric curious actually you know what she kind of this isn't actually that different than uh except for vengeful maybe then we see her in in house of the dragon but she's got a dragon as well She's got Eberron here, who is imperious, impulsive, and defiant. Interesting traits for a dragon there. Um, we have had some, you know, changes and additions to our court. Obviously, we've got Lord. Oh, what do we got here? Fop Doodle, your crimes against me are reprehensible. Well, yeah, okay, we'll meet you in combat. Not us personally, but we'll we'll have somebody meet you in combat. You know, we've got Lord Lyman here as our Castellan, doing a good job as always. Sir Ricaris Whiteblood here, once again, doing a good job as he always does. Alan Yu, of course, serving as our steward. We've actually got uh, Martin Garstain here. Now uh, Now that we freed him from <laughs> the Lannister prison here, um, he is serving as our marshal, and he's, you know, he's pretty capable at it. Rodney Caring, of course, as our... Um, 
as our spy master and then Damon Dalt serving as our admiral. So yeah, not too shabby there. And I think we've got a few changes here. Yeah, we've got Arthur Keltigar as our captain of the guard. Robert Storm, of course, master at arms. We've put uh, Ed Weil the scholar here as our antiquarian, which is good. And then Master of Hunt, of course, Alan, and then Cork Conacher right there. So yeah, that's uh, that's our court and uh, the changes to it. Anyways, this guy wants to meet us and do, who are we going to send? I mean, we got to send one of these new guys, don't we, right? Let's, uh, who do we send? Azael Storm? Hmm. Think you can do it, Azael? What about Agar Urzak? I want to send one of the big guys. I mean, we're not going to send... We can't send poor Garland Rowan here. The man lost the leg for us. I mean, yeah, that's... Uh, we're going to have to give him some sort of position here that's suitable for a man without a leg because, I mean, he surely he can't serve as our knight, <laughs> you know, with one leg. Maybe he can, but I don't know. That seems like a tough job. Um... I think we got to send in Azael Storm. <laughs> this is the, the funny thing about this. You make a channel member character and uh, you know what? Sometimes uh, you got to risk him <laughs> in these fights here. I mean, who's he going up against? Ah, just some depressed, sad guy. I mean, yeah, you've got this, Azael. May the best man win. Come on, you got him. You got him. Hey, look at that. Hell yeah, you got to kill. You got to take risks. Uh, oh, look at this. He's got three kills. Oh, 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 nice. Yeah, good job, uh, Azael. Well done. Trial by combat victory. All right. So what are we going to do with you, Lord Titus of Stillwood? I don't know. Will you ransom you? He can't afford the full ransom. Well, then you stay in the goddamn prison for an... You know what? You go. You move to the dungeon. That's what happens. You try to, you try to get out of jail like that. Oh, we got to end our regency here. Yeah, there we go. Um, we can ask our head of faith for claims. Giants, Lance, Sterling, those are all pretty far away. Not going to be useful to us. If we ever got a chance to claim the Prince's Pass, that would be amazing. Prince's Pass, Red March, Stoneway, those would all be pretty cool. Rodri Dane needs a... All right, you can just go under here. Worthy successor to the Knight of the High Sun. Who do we got? Garland. All right, Garland. I know you lost the leg. You can be the success. You know what? Prove us wrong. Prove. You know I, he's a strong fighter. You know what? Give him a give him a peg leg. Give him a big sword. And you know what? I, I don't think I would want still want to mess with him anyways. Um, we can ransom this guy, so we will do so. Ransom money is going to be useful to us. So there we go. Look at that. Looks like our liege is assisting with this um, rebellion in Pentos. They should be able to handle it, although... Yeah, they got... No, the enemies, they're crushed. Damon's got some more kids on the way. Well, oh, Damon's looking sick, though. What is he... Oh, he's got consumption. Damon, you better... You better... Uh... <laughs> you better uh, take your medicine, buddy, because you ain't looking so good. What about going on down here in the Seven Kingdoms? Rhaenyra is, you know, she is actually severely w injured. Not sure what happened, but uh, yeah, she's not looking too good. Let's see. How far away is our heir from, uh, oh, he's 15. He's going to age up. Let's see, first moon. Oh, okay, so he's going to actually age up pretty quick. So, well, this is good. I mean, we're going to see. I'm hoping... Oh, we got another kid from our third son, Theobard. Very well. I'm really hoping that uh, he gets some good combat traits. We'll see. I mean, his combat's already... His prowess is already 15, so no matter what, he's going to be decent in battle. But I'm hoping, you know, he gets a good, you know, skilled tactician or something better and maybe even better than trained fighters. So hopefully uh, he will, but we'll we'll see. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, it's going to just be a couple more days. He will age up. Is there anything else we can do? 
We do have a bunch more mods on. I'll try to put a link to the in the description, if I remember, to the collection. I just want to uh, give a shout out to Darth, who is very active in our Discord, a very active channel member here. He actually made a mod collection of sub mods that work uh, with the current version of the game that all work for together. Um, a lot of them are pretty cool. A lot of them you will see in uh, some effects, like you'll see it, uh, you know, we've got the special uh, models for like lots of the buildings and uh, a bunch of other things like that. So um, if you haven't joined the Discord already, definitely do so. You'll find the link to the mod collection in there at the very least. And uh, yeah, big shout out to Darth for doing that for us and you guys can use it as well so uh and also in the discord we see a lot of really uh, funny like playthroughs and things like you guys have been playing this dragon update for a while yourself and there's been a lot of uh a lot of cool stories going on my ward lord Aegon, has come of age and it is time he left my care as an active and enthusiastic child it is no surprise that Aaron has done well in his studies of war and combat. It is impressive to see such skill in someone so young. He displays a level of insight that's rare even among veteran commanders. On a personal level, he has shown himself to be an incredibly adept individual fighter, mastering even the most difficult forms of traditional stone tarnished combat. Damn, what did you get? Holy crap, what? I did not re-roll this, you guys. This is just literally what this character got just on his own <laughs> look at this this is insane until wow holy crap i mean we could we literally could not have asked for anything better brilliant strategist formidable fighter to see aaron on the battlefield is to meet the stranger holy mo man his look at yeah that's that's pretty good i mean his his prowess is still only 23 but if we were to give him dawn which he will, oh, wow. Do we pass on the title of the Sword of the Morning? I think we do, right? I think we do. Um, yeah, I mean, we have to. We have to give it, like, look, I mean, he personality worthy of Dawn plus 500. He is worthy. I think we have to. Yeah, that's so cool. So we get to pass on, you know what? We're we're getting older, 55 years of age. You know, the sword of the morning should be held by the one who can wield the blade, you know, to its utmost. And, you know, we've got gray ghosts. We've got a dragon. We don't need this sword, but our young grandson is worthy of it. That's freaking awesome, man. Definitely, we are going to do so. And there we go. Look at that. Lord Aaron, the sword of the morning. Hell yeah. I think we lose the, uh, I guess we're still considered the sword of the morning um, because we are from the, the previous like generations of it. That is so epic though. Hell yeah. That's so cool. Lord Aaron, sword of the morning. Damn. Yeah. He is a bad ass. <laughs> He's definitely going to be able to tame gray ghosts. Like, for sure. For sure he is. We've raised him to, we've raised him well. We, you know, he's probably going to even be, you know, a greater, a greater knight than even us. And look at his traits. Calm. You little snake. He escaped our dungeon. Oh. Well, everybody knows that you're, you know, that you lost your trial by combat. So the gods don't favor you anyways. But yeah, look at Aaron's traits. Calm, brave diligent ambitious this ambitious trait is going to give us a lot of extra possibilities um in the next season when we're playing as lord Aaron here because an ambitious character can do a lot of things that like an honorable character like lord tion um, might not necessarily do and so i think that it's going to be a really the, the essentially the idea here playing as lord tion is to set up a really interesting scenario in the future. You know, we've got Damon here in the in the three daughters here. We've got, you know, a Targaryen house that could potentially be divided. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, we're in battle. Are we? 
Let's go. I'll, I'll just read the event. Then I'll be able to. Great Ghost pulls us higher and higher above the chaos of Garalunkia. Oh, yeah, we must be fighting on the Dornish side. Allowing a brief reset among the clouds, eyeing the battlefield, I see that Garolo has already drawn his forces forward. Most surprising of all, he is leading their wedge, charge himself while doubtlessly brave. I can't help but think such a distance from his troops is unwise. A bold move for someone in tail hitting distance? Oh no, that's disrespectful for such bravery. Um, <laughs> uh, you persist with the current plan, a bold move. You swoop down and swipe him off his horse. Um, that's, that'd be disrespectful for his bravery. Ah, I don't know. I mean, maybe we are honorable, but you know what? We've got a, we do have a duty as well. Uh, I think that'd be disrespectful to his bravery. I think that's the more fitting choice here. Could have got a dragon kill. That would have been cool, but ah, you know what? Tion, he you know he he appreciates uh he appreciates bravery. Oh, we're struggling to learn. Oh no, we yeah, okay. Clearly we are not a polyglot. We are struggling to learn the Valyrian language, which is unfortunate. I'm hoping that our son might actually or our grandson might actually be able to learn Valyrian, but I guess we'll see. Um Hobber brought my ton grandson to the onto the market. Generous, yeah, that's fine. Lyman, what are you doing? Lord Lyman somehow has a claim on the Lordship of Radiant Cliffs against our grand. Uh, can we tell him to stop? <laughs> Lyman, stop this. Um, let's see. Come on, Lyman, you can't, you can't go conquering lands of our. I don't know what it is. It must be. What? What are you doing, Lyman? How dare you defy me? What is up with that? He's trying to take... <laughs> okay. Lyman. <laughs> trying to take lands from our family? What about that? In prison? I mean, technically, he's not acting illegally. What happened here? It must be some sort of conflict between... <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Some sort of conflict here between that. Well, he is ambitious. Maybe, you know what? Maybe it's because we are away. You know, we're up here. Apparently, we're up here fighting uh, fighting a war in Pentos. Lord Lyman is trying to, like, you know, position himself as, like, the, the, the Lord here. Like, the Lord Protector of the, the Southern Coast. I don't know. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe somebody can answer for that. Uh, maybe somebody can answer for their character trying to uh, usurp my grandson's land. We're going to have to do something about that. Uh, yeah, Lord Lime. Apparently, apparently he does not respect our authority. So, yeah, that's uh, that's unfortunate for Lyman because uh, we uh, we need our people to respect our authority. So. But damn, Lord Aaron is increasing... His martial ability as well. Damn, I love to see that. Sword of the Morning. Hell yeah. That's so cool. So our next character will be another Sword of the Morning. And you know what? Hopefully, potentially a dragon rider. I mean, his wife is certainly going to be... I think she might be a dragon. She is a dragon rider already. She's the rider of Azantis. Look at this dragon here. Oh, skittish. Impulsive and accepting. Ooh, interesting. That's pretty cool. He's a cool dragon. I like a good, good old green dragon. Um, let's see here, Prince Corin. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we won that war. Nice. Now we're gonna come back and <laughs> tell Lyman like, "What the hell are you doing, man? Get out of here." Um, we can't do anything about it though. Do you, can, are you able to like? Call in some allies here. 800 versus 700. Okay, well, maybe our grandson's armies will be able to actually <laughs> hold their lands against our <laughs> wayward vassal here. Petition liege? No, nah, we don't want to petition. I mean, could we ever make up with Corin here? I don't know. 
My best friend Robert approaches me with a big smile on his face. My dearest friend, we finally see each other. I feel like we never spend any quality time together. Maybe you'd be willing to try something new with me? I just know the thing to distract your mind, restore your body, and lift your spirits. There's a famous wandering minstrel in town. Why don't we go watch a performance? I'm sure it'll be good. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's we could spend some quality time with our best friend. I'm actually cool with that. Young Robert here, you know what? He's been a loyal and able servant of us for a very long time. How much money do we got? You know, if we could rack up a little bit more money, I would definitely ah, you know what? We could probably sell some stuff. Sell these wolf fangs. What about court artifacts? Do we have any court artifacts? No. We could sell the candle of the crone. Oh, that health health boost is actually nice. What about this modest gemstone? How much would we sell that for? 40. Yeah, I'm fine with that. What about these wolf? Um, it's good. But I still want to sell it because I want to do a tournament. I think a tournament would be really cool. Oh, it's gonna cost 320. Um, can we can we do it for cheaper? We might be able to do it for cheaper, honestly. Let's uh let's try. See if we can plan out a tournament here in Starfall that will be a little bit cheaper. So let's add contest. We're obviously gonna do a you know, we'll probably just do a melee and a joust. That's it. Oh, it's already too much. Maybe just a joust? Um, let's see. Can we remove this? Just the joust? Okay, we still need a little bit more money. So we're gonna have to find some we're gonna have to find some money somewhere. Uh where? No idea. We could request a loan from the Iron Brain. Oh god, we know how that went in our previous <laughs> previous seasons we could potentially make some money back though by winning the tournaments ourselves um i don't know our economy isn't that good we're spending a lot of money promoting our legend here which is starting to spread a little bit i don't think we're ever gonna get i don't think we're gonna be able to get oh we could complete it right now that's gonna give us a lot more money i mean in order to increase our quality, it, it has to spread to a hundred baronies. That is a lot of, that's a lot. We would have to keep going for another way too long. And really it gives us the launch a legendary adventure. Ugh, that could be cool, but I don't know if we need to do it. Um, I think that we just, I think we just got to complete it because we're spending a lot of money. It's cool that we got to do this. And you know what? It's spread kind of in this region here, which I think is really neat. Um, but, you know, it's not uh, it's not necessarily something that we need to just keep going here. Like the benefits are cool, but I don't think that we need to keep spending our money here. Um, but yeah, the, you know, this legend, as we mentioned before, it does kind of harken back to that theory of the great empire of the dawn and its connection to House Dane and things like that. And, you know, from the connection to E.T., the connection to the Valyrians, all that kind of stuff, you know, all makes a lot of sense. It's all very cool. Uh, and so, yeah, we've got a very interesting um legend here and i think we're just going to complete it because we can't afford to spend all of this money here so let it be told let this adventure be told i think that was pretty cool we get a, we're getting our money back which is nice oh and look at this we can clear grounds for a legendary building what do you know legendary statue one realm province will become eligible for a legendary statue that's pretty cool. Uh, I like all the, these legendary buildings are really neat. But yeah, let's get a st potentially a statue. Shining Sands. Hmm. Is that the only... I wonder if that's the only one that... Uh, where is Shining Sands anyways? Shining Sands. Oh, it'd be over here in Nightfall. We'd build a statue. I was hoping that it would be in Starfall. But Starfall, Nightfall. Eh, it's still cool. All right, let's just do it. I don't know if you can get it to do a different place, but 
I'm fine with that. It might not be able to do Starfall because Starfall's already got a bunch of uh, special buildings in it already. So yeah, maybe uh, maybe that's all we got here. 850. It's not terrible. The image of a legendary ruler now made immortal in stone. Yeah, we. It'd be cool to build that. I'm sure our son will get around to, or our grandson will get around to building that at some point here. You know, you should really ally with your your cousin here and stop frickin' Lyman from causing chaos in our realm. But, you know, that's not for us to, to manage clearly. I mean, <laughs> this situation is being sorted out between the, the skirmishing armies that are are dealing with it. I wish we could do more, but we've really, I think we've literally exhausted all of our options here. Unless we modify vassal contract. No, what about increasing? We can't even pass higher crown authority here. So yeah, I don't think that there's actually much we can do about this. My grandson Aaron enters my chamber looking disapproving. Grandfather, my lord, I want to discuss my betrothal. I can't do it. I don't want to marry Leanne. Where to start? If I'm honest with myself, I can't stand her. I can't possibly find um, fulfillment from a woman like her, a bastard. How could I possibly? Please, grandfather, please don't make me do this. Ah, uh, she may be a bastard. True. But she is a dragon rider. You know, she's a, still a daughter of King Damon. Um, oh, I don't know. Would Damon accept, you know, him marrying one of his other daughters? I don't think so. Aaron will make the marriage I have arranged. We didn't even arrange this marriage, but I think we have to. He loses, he loses some opinion of us, but you know, Aaron, you got to do your duty. We, you know, what we're trying to, we're trying to make a dragon rider house. We need you, ooh, we need you to do what needs to be done, Aaron. So, yeah, I mean, disease is spreading down the green blood. Hopefully it doesn't make its way all through a torn. But the question is, what is going to happen from here? Who knows? Like I said, leave your suggestions for what we should uh, change the name of the three daughters to. Is Damon going to survive? That's a good question. And look at this. Rhaenyra died from her wounds. Well now, now a dance of dragons suddenly it looks a lot more possible. You know, although Rhaenyra's son, Maelor here, is ah, he's six years old. So he's not he's not too young. And he does have a small dragon, Demagon. Oh, what a cute looking dragon. But yeah, I mean, is this a chance for the Greens and their faction, you know, uh, Alicent here to get her own son on the throne? Potentially. I mean, wars have been started for less. And so the question is, will we see a dance? It's entirely possible that we will. But that will be in a future episode. So until then, Wanderers, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.